Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. You guys know around here, we like to have transparent conversations about real issues. And so today I'm coming with a little bit of a rant. I just wanna address something. As we all know, over the last few weeks, over the last few months, there have been so much going on surrounding fights, against violence and injustice, racial injustice, um, and even, you know, violence against women. It's been a tough time to have these uncomfortable conversations, but they're conversations that we need to have. And um, I've recorded a few videos, I just need to actually edit them, but um, this one will probably come out before them. So please don't think I'm ignoring the situation, I'm not. Um, if you've followed me on Instagram, which you should, um, you'll see that I've been having these conversations and I've just been encouraging everybody to definitely continue learning and don't think that these these moves of um really calling out abuse in power but also fighting for change and finding solutions um to empower ourselves to empower communities is something that we should just let pass by or just the seasonal movement it's something we need to continue working on and growing in and still be passionate about so I know it's been a few weeks and it's kind of like the the hashtags aren't trending anymore but that doesn't mean we should move on but yeah today i'm going to be ranting about the glorification of struggle in relationships but also just in life in general as i've been you know being on the tl and scrolling through i've been seeing the most interesting things it not even interesting just disgusting stuff about for example in a romantic relationship as a woman if you were able to um you know stick around your man and it's, it's not even just a recent conversation but you know stick around your man while he's doing xyz that's the proof of a good woman and you're gonna get the ring and i'm i owe you my life because you've held me down in all of the the things that have happened in my life and i think we see it sometimes even in like celebrity relationships you know when I went to jail and then I slept with 10 other women and had four other kids and when I did XYZ and I did that 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 you were there for me and I'm going to love you forever because of that we make it a thing of the hallmark of a great relationship is how much we can endure how much we can suffer and that's the thing it's not just struggle it's suffer we want people to suffer to show us that we love them and the truth of the matter is that's not how love works. In relationships, oftentimes, right, women are told, look past the cheating, look past the abuse, look past the manipulation, look past the violence. And the reason why we're told to forgive so much isn't just because forgiveness is good, but actually because culturally in our society across, you know, as a somebody who grew up in a West African household, I consider myself a Ghanaian woman, right? Uh, growing up in a Ghanaian household, growing up in a West African household, and I'm sure so many people can relate, um, but also just generally for women um, over the last, you know, forever, marriage and being in a relationship and having a man has been seen as an accomplishment. It's been seen as as a woman, for you to be married, it's a checkbox of your womanhood. It confirms that you are a woman worthy of marriage, therefore you are a true woman, you're a woman deserving of respect. And that's not what we're going to believe around here. At the end of the day, married or not, you have such a great destiny, you have been purposed for something so much greater, you have been made to be powerful, to be beautiful, to literally just carry out God's work here on this earth and marriage can definitely help you do that and being a wife and being a mother is a huge part of your life if that's what you're called to do as well and I believe I'm even called to it right to get married and have kids but what we shouldn't limit ourselves to is to make it's is making that our pedestal making that our check and seal of now i am complete because what that has led to is an idolatry of marriage idolatry of um having a partner or a spouse and it means that you do you compromise so much to maintain it because of fear that if you lose it you'll somehow lose some sort of status oftentimes when people are encouraged to forgive there is not a balanced conversation about repentance there's no balanced conversation about making a change and actually turning away from dysfunctional behaviors and actually not just being sorry and not just 
groveling and not just begging but actually making an active change within us right and that's why we need to talk about things like accountability what's important to know is i'm not saying relationships are going to be easy i'm not just saying that life is going to be easy there are so many things which people have to struggle for and hustle for and work hard for and go through in order to grow but that's the key thing people have to go through things so they can grow you get challenged so that you can grow and the proof of your growth is that we don't get caught up in this cycle again but sometimes we glorify that the challenge is even there and look how hard I'm holding on look how hard I'm enduring look how hard I'm suffering through thinking that that's love but how can love for someone else cause you so much harm Jesus done that on the on the cross and even he rose from the dead you know the more dysfunctional we are the more that we can prove that despite all our imperfections we still love each other and it's not imperfections actually it's huge abuses it's huge dysfunction it's huge manipulation and oftentimes the reason why we don't want to leave is because our identity is so caught up in this relationship our identity is so caught up in somebody telling us I love you and those words actually having absolutely no weight because they don't show you that they love you and this isn't a hate run against men I have so many amazing brothers around me but I think what I've seen in our generation just generally is there's this fear about accountability that says if you hold me to a higher standard if you require for me to to start actually practicing what I preach to actually start putting actions behind my words if you're if you're holding me to account for the things that I do that's not fair because no one's perfect and it's like hold on a minute yes everyone is growing but what I try to believe is that if you're saying that as people we're trying to grow we're trying to grow it we're trying to mature we're trying to grow our mindset we're trying to grow in our faith we're trying to grow a, a family together we're trying to grow a life a legacy an empire and that even leads me on to talking about this glorification of my children will struggle and they'll hustle and they won't inherit a dime from me because I want them to know what it means to work hard well then what's the point of you working what's the point of you building a legacy what's the point if everyone just wants to struggle that's why we end up in one dimensional cycles with no evolution because no one's standing on the shoulders of giants no one's looking back at what they've been through and saying listen no no no, no. we're not going to get caught up in dysfunctional behavior right now but what sometimes I see and it hurts me so much in relationships because I have been through it I never want anyone to think because I sit behind this camera and I talk this passionately about something it's because I think everyone is getting it wrong and I'm getting it right why I'm saying this is because I remember I I used to be in relationships where I would get cheated on, I would get called names, I would be literally physically abused, I would be manipulated and it was for so many other factors right but the reason I came to this conclusion that hold on a minute this isn't love. I am actually still here because I'm scared. I'm scared not necessarily just of this person but I'm actually scared to be alone. I'm scared to have to let this person go because what that would mean is that in me saying actually I don't want to be a part of a cycle of dysfunction, I don't want to be a part of this cycle of suffering, I want to actually separate myself so that I can grow, you can grow because I believe that you can grow. Sometimes I was thinking well that's actually my love, I'm showing my love because you know here I am, I want to be around, I want to make sure that they can grow, I'm taking responsibility to make sure that I can help them through this journey of becoming better but that's not what love is, actually that's fear. Fear makes you say, I don't want to be alone. Fear makes you say, well, if I lose this person, who else will come and want me? Who will respect me? Who will, who, what will people think of me if I leave this relationship? But the truth is the epitome of strength is to say, these are the scars. These are the pains. These are the things that I've gone through, but this is how I healed. This is how I overcame. Not just about what I endured. This is actually how I moved past this. And sometimes we don't want to get to that point of actually having to grow, of actually having to change, change, to change, completely leave those bad things behind in that idea that way. No, it's, it's because we glorify this point of being messed up of just having struggles, of just being imperfect. 
that's not our aim. Our aim is to use these struggles as a stepping stone to move and advance into the next place. The truth is you can build strength and wisdom without actually having to go through physical pain all the time or having to go through mental anguish or emotional abuse all of the time. I mean, I was seeing a video of a girl and her boyfriend literally like, they were doing WWE wrestling, right? And loads of people were in the reply section talking about, yeah, this is how relationships really are. If that's how your relationship really is, get out of that relationship. Because at the end of the day, I'm not saying that relationships are going to be fine and dandy. But if this is what we settle for, and that's what it is, it's settling. If this is what we settle for, why are we going to be shocked that that's where we end up, that that's where we stay, that that's where we plateau, literally. We have families, oh gosh, we have families, we give, oh God. We end up in cycles of dysfunction because nobody chose to break the cycle. Everybody settled for that suffering. Everybody settled for that struggle. Someone at some point has to say, this is enough, stop it. That's sometimes where I get so angry at this culture of glorifying struggling. Our desire should be to see healthy, functional, productive relationships. And sometimes when we think that relationships are all about going through the dirt with each other, and not seeing each other as individuals grow and evolve and actually holding each other as friends, as like romantic partners, as, as you know, leaders, whoever it is, as co-workers, whatever it is. If we don't hold each other to an account, if we don't hold each other to a standard that says, listen, I'm holding you accountable. Sometimes we think that's because, hey, I love you. Love doesn't coddle people into remaining the same way that they are remaining comfortable it says no actually i believe you can be better and if i need to remove myself out of this situation i will so that you can be better because right now it seems like you're so attached to the dysfunctional place that you are in it's going to drive everybody no, not just you but it's going to break everybody if we don't encourage people to evolve right because we're so scared we remain constantly where we are and that's how people end up in generational cycles right when we tell people to continue to be quiet at sexual abuse to continue to be quiet about violence to to not speak out too much you know don't ruffle any feathers and just endure just be patient just have long suffering when we have so many conversations about forgiveness, but no one calls out for a repentant heart. When we have so many talks about being patient, but nobody talks about people having to change. We get this imbalance where there is so much abuse, not just physical, but in every way, an abuse of power. And people are scared and fearful to leave because it's like you're showing that you're just a weak person. Walking away from dysfunction isn't a weakness. Walking away from suffering isn't a weakness because strength isn't about how many punches you can take. It's not about how many times you can be screwed over. It's not about how many times you can watch something happening towards you that is breaking you down. But if you are in a relationship right now where you feel as though, well, I feel like I just have to stay because who else is gonna want me? Let me tell you something. Your worth does not come from the relationship that you are in. Your worth does not come from the things that you do or do not do. Actually, your worth has been, it's been settled from before the beginnings of time, right? You are somebody made in the image of God and you might not even be a religious person. That's, that's fine, that's your business. But let me tell you the truth about who you are. You are somebody who was made in the image of God. You are somebody who was made for a specific purpose. You are somebody who was worth dying for. You are somebody who God looks at and says that person is worth more to me than anything in the world. So I'm going to lay my life down and shed my blood so that they can live a life free. Live a life free. <laughs> Freedom. Freedom. And if that's what God sees when he's looking at you, why are you putting yourself through se continual sequences of dysfunction and abuse and struggle in the name of 
I just want someone to love me. Do you not know that you're loved already? I get it. Some people are like, oh, just get the gospel away. But at the end of the day, that's, I truly believe it just fixes all issues. I really do. Someone looks at you and says you're already loved so much. Someone's already suffered on your behalf. And yet we go through cycles of suffering continuously because we believe society's lies. That as a woman, the extra thing you need in order to prove yourself, the extra work that you need to do in order to be considered worthy of any sort of respect is just to make sure a man co-signs you. Just to make sure that somebody can, sh can show you that you're actually lovable. The truth is, you are so powerful. You are so beautiful. And sometimes I know a lot of women don't even know that that's what's happening to them. And that's why we need brothers and sisters around us who actually encourage us to, to realize that there's better. If you are in a situation of, okay, well, I don't know if I'm being manipulated. I don't know if I'm, I'm being abused. Go to a friend and ask them. Don't be closed off. Go to someone and ask them. Go to a leader and ask them. Go to your parents and ask them. And if you haven't got anyone else around you, maybe this isn't the time to build a romantic relationship. Actually, maybe this is time to build normal relationships or family and friends. I'm sick of being told that you need to lower your expectations. You need to, you know, you need to settle. You need to settle. And we'll have another conversation about that, I'm sure, very, very soon. But I think when we tell people to be realistic, what we need to be careful of is telling them that finding something, not necessarily that's perfect, like in the, the idealistic sense of things, but more so finding something which doesn't crush you is going to be unrealistic. That's not true. That's really, really not true. We need to stop settling. Sometimes we see people who go through even for myself, I can talk about, for example, my addiction, right? I used to just think, this is the only way I can live my life forever. I'm just going to be addicted to this forever. And the truth is, no, you don't have to settle for this. This isn't the only way it has to be. Is it going to be easy? No, but is it necessary? Yes. We can't keep going through cycles of suffering in relationships or suffering in life in general, suffering in, in situations where, which we think are unchangeable and being complicit in a system that allows people to continue to suffer with the idea where that that's just how life is and that's just how life goes. The reason why life goes that way is because nobody wants to break that cycle. No one wants to break that behavior. Everybody wants to just allow it to pass through and even though in our hearts we know it's wrong no one wants to say, everyone wants to brush it under the rug as if it doesn't actually take people to change people inside to change change their minds and change their hearts for society to change for cycles to be ended for things that we can and when I say cycles I'm talking about the norms that we allow to rule over our culture and rule our behaviors it takes somebody to step out of that and say it doesn't have to be this way. I pray that people come into your life or you seek out people or a community of people who can help you through. Not because, you know, and even to those who may be thinking, wow, I'm a dysfunctional person. I was too. I used to be really dysfunctional and I was on the receiving end of a lot of dysfunction. There is the ability to change. There really is the opportunity to change. And change is really, really possible. And I think that's the realism in me, I think, that believes that, okay, a lot of things are messed up, but there's actually an opportunity to change. There's an opportunity to live beyond that. And transformation is a real thing. And I, I pray that you come to know that about yourself, about your situation, about your relationship, about your your family, about whatever it is that you are, you are going through. Um, and I really hope that this video helps someone, but I'll probably see you guys in my next video. Hopefully, definitely drop a comment down below on what you think. Um, I think there are so many things we could unpack from this conversation. Um, and I think it's a necessary conversation to have. So let me know what you think down in the comment section. And I will see you guys in my next video. Stay beautiful and stay blessed. Mwah.